Hello, my name is John Nolan and I am a PhD student at UC San Diego. I will be discussing our work on ROS, a passive smart surface for roadside to vehicle communication. Intelligent transportation systems would coordinate motorists, pedestrians, and public transportation by exchanging information between them. They have the potential to reduce traffic accidents and deaths, optimize transportation resources, and even relieve humans of driving through the use of autonomous vehicles and interconnected transportation systems. Due to the complexity of these systems, however, th these technologies require significant amounts of information about the static and dynamic surroundings such as traffic lights and signs and common roadway rules. The current trend in research focuses on smartening the vehicle as much as possible. This trend places the entire burden of realizing an intelligent transportation future on the vehicle itself. These intelligent vehicles use a multitude of sensors and technologies such as vehicle to everything, a dedicated short range communications, 5G, Wi-Fi, LiDAR, and many others. For example, a Tesla today uses about eight cameras, sonar, GPS, radar, and a custom neural net computer system to achieve its current state of autonomy. This current trend pushes non-intelligent vehicles out of the ability to be somewhat autonomous and increases the cost of deploying autonomous vehicles altogether. Therefore, it is critical that intelligent infrastructure supplement intelligent vehicles, which will reduce vehicle sensor requirements, thereby also reducing the overall cost and complexity of these vehicles. Unfortunately, there is one major problem. Our current infrastructure isn't very smart. Aside for complex traffic light networks in large metropolitan areas, roadway infrastructure consists entirely of visible road signs. Visible road signage requires the full attention of the driver and does not lend itself, it, itself well to roadway optimization. To one day achieve intelligent transportation systems, the visible road sign will need to be updated. Current solutions try to process roadside information by using extensive camera systems paired with complex computer algorithms. These solutions, however, aren't optimal in all driving scenarios and are currently mainly used as aids to assist motorists in making decisions instead of completing the tasks for them. Other solutions set out to create detailed maps and databases of all driving locations and road signs to obtain vehicle autonomy. One easy solution to circumvent these issues would be to implement vehicle to infrastructure communication such as DSRC or RFID, for example. These solutions, however, would complicate either the road sign, the vehicle, or both by requiring the installation of dedicated hardware. Therefore, overall system complexity and costs has not been reduced. Some concrete examples of intelligent transportation systems are Continental Smart Intersection and Syncom's Near Sky 360. Continental foresees intersections using cameras, DSRC, and vehicle to everything capable vehicles to provide all road users with information about the dynamical environment. Syncom's Near Sky 360 is an edge computing sensor package for smart city applications, which include radar, cameras, network connectivity, and infrastructure to vehicle communications based on, on DSRC. These examples, however, robust require intelligent vehicles and intelligent infrastructure, which will impede adoption and increase system complexity. This is where ROS can help smarten current road signs without modifying existing vehicle hardware. ROS is a passive millimeter wave tag that can encode information in its geometrical layout. Current millimeter wave automotive radars can sense and read the information encoded within ROS as it drives by. Similar to how road signs are retroreflective to visible light, meaning light is reflected back in the direction of the source, ROS is retroreflective to millimeter wave radar signals. ROS is fully passive and chipless and because of its planar construction can be easily integrated onto road sign infrastructure. For the ROS tag to be useful and reliable, however, it must satisfy a few requirements. ROS must operate at long distances and be easily detectable by automotive millimeter wave radar. ROS must also perform well in many driving conditions and in many driving scenarios.
In addition, the tag should encode sufficient amounts of information to accommodate the many types of road signs we use today. With that, radar communications are governed by the radar range equation. Passive millimeter range uh, wave radar links pose unique challenges to the system design, unlike their active lower frequency counterparts. To achieve long range radar communication at millimeter wave frequencies, it is important to optimize the radar cross section of the device. In addition, retroreflection is paramount for long range visibility at many viewing angles. To address this challenge, ROS utilizes Vanada arrays, which are pairs of antenna elements connected by transmission lines with predefined links. Vanada arrays are inherently retrodirective due to the phase conjugation that occurs to the incident millimeter wave signals as they propagate through the array. ROS uses Vanada arrays as building blocks to create stacks of arrays, which allows for the scalable increase in the radar visibility and range. ROS uses aperture coupled patch antennas to realize a Vanada array retroreflective concept. Aperture patch antennas were selected so that the transmission lines could be placed on a separate layer using strip line transmission lines. Strip lines are advantageous because they are shrouded by ground planes both above and below the transmission line, which reduces spurious radiation as signals propagate through the lines. The aperture coupled patch antenna was optimized by adjusting the length and width dimensions of the patch along with the H slot opening parameters. The optimization was concluded when the return loss was less than 10 dB across the millimeter wave radar band. The raw stackup consists of four copper layers using two Rogers 4350B cores bound together by Rogers 4350F prepreg. The top layer contains the patch antennas followed by the H-shaped aperture ground plane. Below the patch antenna ground plane lies the strip line layer then followed by the second and final ground plane. Traditionally, Vanada arrays use transmission lines of equal length. Since the transmission lines in ROS are not of equal length, they must all differ by multiples of the guided wavelength. Therefore, all three must be in phase at a design frequency of choice for retro directive operation. The transmission line lengths are determined by searching for a configuration that in ensures equal insertion phase at 79 gigahertz and which provides a compact design. The three transmission lines are shown in the figure below and differ by 2.5 and 4 lambda compared to the shortest line in the center. The additional 0.5 lambda length of the second strip line is used to remove the 180 degree phase offset induced by the opposite feeding directions between antennas two and four. As shown, the second patch is fed from the left while the fourth patch is fed from the right, which induces a 180 degree phase shift between them. Patches zero and five are both fed from opposite directions compared to two and three, which results in a 360 degrees phase offset and ultimately does not require a strip line length adjustment. The polarization order of the patches reduces the overall lengths of the transmission lines and also leads to a more compact design. With that, a, a VAA performance is, con is quantified by the monostatic and bistatic radar cross-section. Monostatic cross-sections are measured at an observation angle when the transmitter and receiver of the radar are located at the same point. Bistatic measurements place the transmitter at a fixed location, whereas the receiver is swept along the desired observation angles. The overall radar cross-section is dependent on the number of antenna elements and the gain of the antenna elements used within the array. Any losses incurred by antenna inefficiencies or transmission lines directly reduce the radar cross-section of the, of the device. The monostatic cross-section of the Vanada array is maintained over a wide field of view of 120 degrees, whereas a uniform linear array achieves retroreflection within the broadside specular direction only. The bistatic simulation also confirms the retroreflective behavior for an incident plane wave arriving at 30 degrees. 
the Van Otta array's bistatic cross-section has a maximum in the same direction as the incoming source, compared to the uniform linear array having a maximum at the specular direction only. To increase the overall radar cross-section of the array, one can simply add more element pairs. This solution, however, is constrained by the layout of the design and the bandwidth requirements of the application. In addition, great losses would be incurred by the increasing transmission line lengths. As previously mentioned, Ross uses unequal uh, length transmission lines, which limit the Van Otta array bandwidth. It was determined that the optimal number of antenna pairs to achieve the four gigahertz of bandwidth required for automotive millimeter wave radar is three. The RCS contributions of antenna pairs beyond three is, neg is negligible and creates a more complex layout design. Due to this limitation of the number of elements that can be used in a single Venata array, Ross uses multiple Venata arrays in stacks to increase the overall RCS. The stacking of these VAAs, however, creates an unwanted effect of very narrow elevation beam widths in the radar cross section of the tag. Narrow beam widths can create problems with antenna misalignment between the vehicle's radar and the tag, reducing detection, detection accuracy and range. To circumvent this issue, Roche shapes the elevation pattern of the Van Otta array stack by increasing the length of the interconnecting transmission lines to encode predetermined phase weights onto each Van Otta array element within the stack. By shaping the elevation radar cross-sectional pattern, antenna misalignments can be avoided. A third challenge is Ross must be able to perform adequately in heavy multipath environments. Environmental interferences from surrounding objects such as other vehicles, buildings, pedestrians, etc., could potentially overwhelm Ross's return signal, burying it within the noise. To mitigate this challenge, a polarization switching Venata array is used as a fundamental building block within a Venata array stack. The polarization of the return signal is rotated to an orthogonal polarization. The surrounding objects, however, tend to reflect millimeter wave signals with the same polarization. By switching the polarization, the radar can then discriminate between the Ross tag and the surrounding objects reflections. Lastly, RAW should allow for large encoding capabilities. Some common data encoding techniques modulate the timing of pulses reflected back to an interrogator using reflectors spaced out at predefined distances. Another technique is to encode information in the frequency response of the signal by attenuating select frequencies using notch filters. Both of these techniques can create unique RF signatures within the return signal. However, at millimeter wave frequencies, these techniques are not easily to achieve. Ross encodes information spatially using polarization switching Venata arrays as bits. Each stat can be modeled as an omnidirectional RCS pattern. The tag, which consists of a collection of these stacks, will have a superimposed RCS pattern with the pairwise spacings of each stack encoded within the pattern. The vehicle passing by the tag captures a radar cross-sectional pattern and performs a fast Fourier transform on the data to decode the underlying relative distances, or in other words, the geometrical layout of the tag. The details of the multi-tag model can be represented as a summation of the individual radar cross-sectional patterns of each stack. RT here denotes the cross-sectional pattern, which is a function of theta or the viewing angles of the radar. Each stack located at a separate distance denoted by DK will experience a phase shift due to the uh, round trip propagation delay measured at angle theta. Expanding the first equation results in a summation over all combinations of pairwise stacks, which can then be further written as the summation of cosines with frequency components determined by the relative locations. A single stack within the tag is used as a reference stack and is denoted by DL. With M stacks, M minus one bits can be decoded. Using this multi-stack radar cross-sectional model, 
an FFT can be applied to the measured pattern. The resultant RCS spectrum will consist of frequency tones located at the stack's relative locations. A ROS tag consisting of M polarized switching Venata array stacks can create at most M minus one bits of information since one stack is used as a reference for obtaining the relative distances. With the frequency resolution of one half, the minimum stack spacing D that can be measured is lambda by four, which allows for resolution, um, sub wavelength of resolutions. From the multi-stack RCS model, it was determined that the RCS spectrum will contain peaks corresponding to the relative locations of all the pairwise stacks. With M stacks, M times M minus one relative distances or peaks will appear in the RCS spectrum with different amplitudes. Because ROS can only encode M minus one bits of information, the remaining M minus one squared peaks could create interferences and need to be avoided. For example, in the ROS layout shown below, bit zero and bit one will create an interference peak at 13.5 lambda due to their combined contributions to the RCS pattern. Similarly, bit one and bit two will create another interference peak at 16.5 lambda for the same reason. Fortunately, the interfering peaks can be avoided in the frequency domain by strategically placing the tags at specific distances based on the amount of data being encoded. In the Ross example, five stacks are used to encode four bits of information. By placing the first bit at five minus one times a unit spacing of 1.5 lambda, the lower frequency interference peaks generated by columns on the same side will appear below the first bit. Similarly, the interference peaks generated by stacks from opposite sides will appear above the fourth bit. Ultimately, by placing Venata array stacks in this way, a predefined coding band is created, which is interference free and can be decoded. The ROS tag, unfortunately, is limited in its encoding capacity due to the far field requirement of the tag. For a given ROS layout design and encoding capability, the minimum distance that the tag must be, uh, must be placed away from the interrogating radar is defined by the antenna far field distance, where D here is the maximum size of the tag. In the far field, propagation paths arriving from the stacks to the radar can be assumed to be parallel. This assumption is necessary since omnidirectional far field antenna patterns were assumed in the multi stack model. Tags placed within this distance or within the near field of the tag will not have properly formed patterns and can create distortions in the RCS spectrum. For the Ross layout design discussed previously, the far field distance is approximately 3.8 meters. Increasing the number of encoding bits will further increase the far field distance requirement and inadvertently also increase the required RCS of the tag. The second limitation is due to the maximum vehicle speed that can be achieved to properly interrogate and decode ROS tags. As the radar is passing by the tag, radar frames are sent and received at different locations. To satisfy Nyquist criterion, the sampling rate must be larger than twice the bandwidth of the signal. In the ROS application, the highest frequency component appears at the width of the tag. By increasing the tag size to encode more information, the bandwidth of the frequency spectrum also increases, requiring higher frame rate radars. With ROS, speeds of up to 86 miles per hour can be achieved using the RCS model and layout design. To alleviate the encoding capacity, however, of a single ROS tag, multiple tags can be de uh, deployed to encode larger amounts of bits. The multi-tag setup will only require that the tag spacing is greater than the radar's 3dB beam width. For the radar used in our experiment, a spacing of 1.53 meters is required to localize and differentiate the two tags. By using a commercial off-the-shelf TI radar mounted onto a sedan, measurements were conducted to verify the performance of the ROS tags using polarization switching Venata arrays. The TI radar is used to localize objects in the environment, 
Then the radar data is used to generate a point cloud of the surrounding objects with a sufficiently high RCS. From the point cloud, the relative location of the object to the radar can be determined and an RCS plot can then be generated. The encoded data from the ROS tag can then be extracted by performing an FFT on the collected RCS data. From our experiments, envir envi environmental reflections from common objects such as street lamps, street meters, and signs placed within 0.5 meters from the ROS tag tend to be weaker than the tag due to the polarization switching design. On average, nearby objects appear to be about 6 dB lower than the ROS tag, which can be used as a discriminative feature. Objects placed farther away will not interfere with ROS detection and decoding because they can be filtered out in the radar point cloud processing step. The second discriminative feature is the point cloud size of the ROS tag, which is highly localized and smaller than most other objects except for pedestrians. These two features combined allow for the detection without any false alarm or missed detections in, our, in all our tests. ROS tags consisting of 32 element stacks can consistently achieve signal to noise ratios of over 14 dB out to six meters. This signal to noise ratio corresponds to a bit error rate of 0.6% using the on off keying modulation model for bit error rate. Higher signal to noise ratios can be achieved using smaller number of elements, but at reduced ranges. ROS tags can also achieve consistently high signal to noise ratios in different environmental conditions, such as light and heavy fog. Furthermore, ROS tags are resilient to elevation misalignment due to the elevation beam shaping design, maintaining signal to noise ratios of 15 dB or higher. And lastly, ROS tags have been experimentally verified up to 30 miles per hour and can maintain bit error rates smaller than 0.8%. Sorry, 0.6%. To conclude, ROS is a passive chipless tag that is retroreflective to millimeter wave signals and acts as a barcode for Rhone signs. ROS encodes information within the monostatic radar cross-section cross-sectional pattern of the tag. Current millimeter wave automotive radars can sense and read from ROS and can achieve bit error rates greater than 0.6% at six meters. Thank you for listening.